B lid is done. My B roof is done. All right. I pre-drilled all these hole these screw holes and I didn't want the wood to split. So there's the roof cap also. I pre-drilled that. And there's one screw per side per um, roof panel. So that's what the overhang looks like on both sides. I'm going to put it on top. And here is me putting the last touch on the beehive. So I've got the, um, the screen panel on there. And like I said earlier, it keeps out varmints and stuff. And the holes in the top and the roof are for airflow. So there it is. It just fits so nice. So I'll give you a picture of all around. And then I'm going to go ahead and start uh, putting the screws in on these um, dovetail joints and I will put the knobs in and I will take off the plexiglass uh, film. So this is what I have left to work with and we'll get it done here in a minute. I wanted to let you know that these pan head screws here, they're inch long pan head screws, those go with the knobs. And then the rest of them, all of these little uh, turning knobs will be assembled with the one inch um, countersink head screws. So the one inch pan head screws just poke through the pre-drilled holes just like that. And on the opposite side, you'll put the knob. And just turn it. Just like that. And then it will go, let me finish tightening it down. It'll go on the side. Just like that. Okay, I got all my latches assembled. I've got two knobs here on the top. It doesn't show that this is supposed to be fastened. Um, I went ahead and made it so that the latch kind of rests on top of that. Um, so this one spins to allow you to take this observation, rear observation door off. Isn't that cool? You can see inside there. This is going to be filled with the flow hive um, assembly that I've got in that box there. So I'll put that door back on. This is the brooder box. This is the super. And I've got my side doors on. I wanted to tell you how I did this. The instructions didn't really um, say, but what I did was I lined up the angled side with the edge of the window. And then I went ahead and put the single screw. It's a one inch screw in there so that when you turn it this way, there's enough of a lip that catches the door and doesn't allow it to come off. Same on the bottom, so when they're both flipped up, you cannot get the window open. But when you turn it sideways, like so, the window pops off. Then I'm going to come around here on the front and show you the last place I put screws was down here at the bottom. I put one screw on each side, and this is where the little B door is. So, this side opened. I'll have to mess with that other side. And there's a single um, nail in there that it pivots on. And then this is the last screw. There's just two screws, one on each side. Tighten that down to the body of the beehive. We are good to go. Look at it. It's so cool. All done. I realize now why that door won't open. It opens the opposite way. So I scooted the top back, reached in there, pushed on it, and it came out this way. So these are our little B doors that are adjustable with a little pivot nail in there. You can look down into the brooder box and 
that <laughs> down in here. This is the screen that keeps the critters out of the top. There's that. Oh, last but not least, I'm going to take the, uh, the film off of the plexiglass. Okay, here we are again. I just took off the film. So now you can see what it looks like inside. Woo, isn't that cool? This will be filled with the Flow Hive contraption. Um, the Flow Frames is what they call it in the instructions. So, the end of our beehive construction. Let me straighten this out a little bit. I'll pull this forward. Trying to get this situated just so. Like I said, it's kind of like Legos, but kind of not because they don't interlock really well. They just kind of sit on top of each other. So, that's it. We've got the base down here with a little bee door. The base, the which is the brooder box, and then this is the super, which the flow frames will be in, and the nice roof. And here we go, I'm so proud. <laughs> that was a fun little construction product, project, and I'm looking forward to getting honey at it, uh, out of it by maybe the end of this year or the beginning of next year. Hello, this is Candace. Welcome to the Brick House, and I wanted to share with you an unboxing and building video of a Langstroth bee box or beehive that we are going to unbox and build for you today. Upon opening the box, we've got the instructions. I'll zoom in and show you what we are building with this box. We've got the... <clears throat> the body of the box and the roof that we will be building first. This is a screen grid. And the next part we have is the um, another grid part that, um, to be honest, I'm not sure exactly what it's for. I think it helps to keep the mites down. Then we've got parts of the body and it smells so good. It smells like cedar. I know these pieces are uh, tongue and groove or dovetailed and they they smell so good and they're lightly coated with a wax. So there's a side piece. There's a piece with a window in it. And then some other various parts. There's another window. That's the inside. And it's uh, the white piece is a clear or it's it's an opaque film that will peel off when we build it. And then there's part of the this part is the B door. Um, these rotate so that it allows the bees to come in and out, and then you can close it off in the winter uh, to help keep the bees warm. So they rotate like that. Here's one of the peaks. It has some ventilation holes in it. Here's a knob. Yeah, it's a little knob. Or a piece that rotates to keep um, a door or a window on. Yeah. And then these are the roof slats. So they fit together and tongue and groove style, and they will become the roof. But they have packed it very nicely in this box. It's well packaged. Everything seems to have made it here without any injuries, um, no damage. So we will begin assembling in just a moment. Here's two sides and a base that also came out of the bottom of the box. And here we have a, bo a bag of knobs, various types of knobs, and some screws that we're going to use for the assembly. 
the instructions for this B box are basically front and back. Um, so this is the front, starts with the number step one, and then this is the back side, which I was showing you earlier. So we will start with step one, and we will build the brood box. This is the brood box right here. Can I get out? Right, we are locating the base. Hello, this is Candace. Welcome to the Brick House. And I wanted to share with you an unboxing and building video of a Langstroth bee box or beehive that we are going to unbox and build for you today. Upon opening the box, we've got the instructions. I'll zoom in and show you what we are building with this box. We've got the <clears throat> the body of the box and the roof that we will be building first. This is a screen grid. And the next part we have is the um, another grid part that... Um, to be honest, I'm not sure exactly what it's for. I think it helps to keep the mites down. Then we've got parts of the body, and it smells so good. It smells like cedar. I know these pieces are uh, tongue and groove, or dovetailed, and they, they smell so good. And they're lightly coated with a wax. So there's a side piece. Here's a piece with a window in it, and then some other various parts. There's another window, that's the inside, and it's, uh, the white piece is a clear, or it's, it's an opaque film that will peel off when we build it. And then there's part of the, this part is the B door. Um, these rotate so that it allows the bees to come in and out and then you can close it off in the winter uh, to help keep the bees warm so they rotate like that here's one of the peaks it has some ventilation holes in it here's a knob yeah it's a little knob or a piece that rotates to keep um, a door or a window on. Yeah. And then these are the roof slats. So they fit together and tongue and groove style and they will become the roof. But they have packed it very nicely in this box. It's well packaged everything seems to have made it here without any injuries um no damage so we will begin assembling in just a moment here's two sides and a base that also came out of the bottom of the box and here we have a, bo a bag of knobs various types of knobs and some screws that we're going to use for the assembly the instructions for this B box are basically front and back. Um, so this is the front, starts with the number step one, and then this is the back side, which I was showing you earlier. So we will start with step one, and we will build the brood box. This is the brood box right here. Can I get out? Can I get out? All right, we are locating the base which is this part and all four sides to the brood box. So we've got two long sides here and two short sides that have a little handle on them. So this is a short side, this is a short side, and then we have our two long sides and we're going to fit them together Gently with the tongue. Um, I keep wanting to call it tongue and groove dovetail joints. We'll get them fitted together. I wanted to show you a picture or a video of the end of each of these joints. So they are tapered 
like so. And the bottom receiving joints are also tapered. And it does say that they will fit tightly. And if it seems like they're going to fit too tightly, that you can hit them with some sandpaper and so that they slide in a little bit more easily. But they will eventually, they want them tight according to the directions and they will be screwed together once they are uh, fit together. Here we have the first joint done. It is a nice fit. We didn't split any of the wood and now we are starting on the second joint. And we're using a hammer and a cloth to kind of persuade it gently to come together. We are almost done. Very nice. All right, there we go. Second side. So we have three sides done and now we're going to put the final side on and I think this will be the trickiest one. So we're going to line these up. Actually this side seems to be sliding through a little bit more easily than those other sides. Thank goodness. That, <laughs> that first side ended up being the trickiest side. So very, very nice. That went together very nicely. All right. So we have placed the brooder box on top of the base. And I wanted to show you something. One end is going to have a gap. I don't know if you can see that gap. While the other end will be flush against the base. And the first bee box or beehive that we made, I made a mistake. And we did not have this nice gap here. The gap is for the door that the bees are going to come in and out of. So we've got this. Um, and it's got the little flaps that are adjustable. Uh, that helps to regulate the, the amount of airflow that comes through and the number of bees that can go in and out. I think it's most important in the winter time when you want it closed so you can help uh, the hive retain the heat. So I just wanted to point out that important thing that I don't think is shown very well in the instructions. I also wanted to point out that the back of the hive will be flush with the base. So the base on the back will be flush and then the front will be set back just a little bit um, because that's where this B door will go. It'll sit on the front. It doesn't sit in the gap. It sits on the front. Just like that. Okay, the next step, we put the, this is called the queen excluder, and we set that on top of the brooder box. That, will, that prevents the queen from going into the top of the hive into the flow hive section. So I've got the, this is called the super, and there are four pieces that come together to make that. Two long pieces with the windows and two shorter ends. One has a handle and then one has a, they call it a uh, rear, rear observation window cover. So you'll be able to pull that off. It'll have handles on the bottom part and you'll be able to pull it off so that you can observe the flow hive. So the flow frames will sit in this super. I also wanted to show you, these are clear. They've got their plexiglass. They just have a film over it right now that will come off. And they are inset and there will be a wooden door that goes over each of these as well. So you'll be able to take the door off and observe the bees in the hive. 
All right, we got the super done. I disassembled just part of it so I could show you a couple things. I'm not sure if it would have been easier for us to do this small piece first. It was the toughest piece to put on um, because it was still kind of dovetailed with those angled uh, pieces, the fingers, and it was just a really tough piece to put together. But we did the bottom first uh, with the sides and then we did that piece and then luckily this piece here just slides right in the the uh, fingers here are square as opposed to the tapered ones on the rest of the box and then finally for this we've got this uh, thin piece that has some pre-drilled holes that are going to be um, where the knobs go. So this piece just slides right there and there's going to be some knobs um, for, uh, to be honest, I, I'll have to read ahead for that. Okay, I just set the super on top of the brooder box. So just to show you, this went right on top of the queen excluder that just sets on top um, kind of like Legos except um, a lot less um, I don't know less secure I suppose but when uh, the bees start building their uh, their hives and everything in there things get kind of stuck together with the uh, the wax and everything so it's it is stable and then here's the window. I still haven't taken the film off of the plexiglass. And then this is the front of the box with the little ramp and the B door, which I have closed at the moment. So you've got a handle there for the brooder box and a handle there for the super. And then this is where the flow hives are going to go or the flow frames as I think is the appropriate word for them. I have yet to put the hardware on and I'm getting ready to start uh, with the roof. In interest of clearing off space for our work area, I'm going to go ahead and put these window covers on here. I will have knobs that will help us take them on or put them on and off. So I'm going to put that on, go ahead and put that one on the other side. And then we've got this screen here and it is going to go on top of the super and it is going to keep uh, varmints and stuff from entering into the beehive. We are starting on the roof. So we're going to start with the four bottom pieces. There are two long pieces and two triangular shaped pieces. And then there's a like a ridge cap here. So I've got these set out on our table. Um, I've got one triangular piece here, one here, and then the two side, long side pieces and then the ridge cap, which is kind of an interesting shaped piece. All right, I moved everything down onto the floor. This front section here has, a, it's a little bit more of an elaborate uh, piece. It's got a, another piece on it for spacing purposes, I believe. And then the long side pieces are um, more elaborate on one end than they are on the other end. And then this back piece is pretty simple and it just sits on top of there. I think there's, um, maybe a vent or something on the back. So we, these pieces do not interlock as well as the rest of them have. So they will be screwed together right now before I move on to the next step. I have the basis for the roof done. I've got uh, two screws in the front part. That's more substantial. I've got one that's going in from the front and then one that's going in from the side. I've done that on both sides, as you can see. And then on the back, I've only got screws in the back side. They, I did have some pre-drilled holes, but I went ahead and drilled a pilot hole a little bit farther because it, the pre-drilled hole was only in this, this front part. 
Um, there's not enough room to put a screw going this way and they don't indicate that that is necessary in the instructions either. Now for the roof pieces and they give you six nice pieces for the roof but I wanted to show you a difference in two of the pieces. There will not be this notch here. It'll look more like this. So these are the last uh, pieces. They will go at the bottom of the roof. Uh, so they'll be like the very first ones you put on and then the rest of them interlock and lay over the top like that. So I will do that next. Okay. My B lid is done. My B roof is done. All right. I pre-drilled all these hole these screw holes and I didn't want the wood to split. So there's the roof cap also. I pre-drilled that. And there's one screw per side per um, roof panel. So that's what the overhang looks like on both sides. I'm going to put it on top. And here is me putting the last touch on the beehive. So I've got the, um, the screen panel on there and like I said earlier it keeps out varmints and stuff and the holes in the top and the roof are for airflow so there it is it just fits so nice so I'll give you a picture of all around and then I'm gonna go ahead and start uh, putting the screws in on these um, dovetail joints and I will put the knobs in and I will take off the plexiglass uh, film so this is what I have left to work with, and we'll get it done here in a minute. I wanted to let you know that these pan head screws here, they're inch long pan head screws, those go with the knobs. And then the rest of them, all of these little uh, turning knobs will be assembled with the one inch um, countersink head screws. So the one inch pan head screws just poke through the pre-drilled holes just like that. And on the opposite side, you'll put the knob. And just turn it. Just like that. And then it will go, let me finish tightening it down. And it'll go on the side. Just like that. Okay, I got all my latches assembled. I've got two knobs here on the top. It doesn't show that this is supposed to be fastened. Um, I went ahead and made it so that the latch kind of rests on top of that. Um, so this one spins to allow you to take this observation rear observation door off isn't that cool you can see inside there this is going to be filled with the flow hive um, assembly that I've got in that box there so I'll put that door back on this is the brooder box this is the super and I've got my side doors on I wanted to tell you how I did this the instructions didn't really um, say but what I did was I lined up the angled side with the edge of the window and then I went ahead and put the single screw it's a one inch screw in there so that when you turn it this way there's enough of a lip that catches the door and doesn't allow it to come off same on the bottom so when they're both flipped up you cannot get the window open but when you turn it sideways like so the window pops off Then I'm going to come around here on the front and show you the last place I put screws was down here at the bottom. I put one screw on each side and this is where the little B door is. So this side opened. I'll have to mess with that other side and there's a single um, 
nail in there that it pivots on. And then this is the last screw. There's just two screws, one on each side. Tighten that down to the body of the beehive. We are good to go. Look at it. It's so cool. All done. I realize now why that door won't open. It opens the opposite way. So I scooted the top back, reached in there, pushed on it, and it came out this way. So these are our little B doors that are adjustable with a little pivot nail in there. You can look down into the brooder box and that <laughs> down in here. This is the screen that keeps the critters out of the top. There's that. Oh, last but not least, I'm going to take the, uh, the film off of the plexiglass. Okay, here we are again. I just took off the film. So now you can see what it looks like inside. Woo, isn't that cool? This will be filled with the Flow Hive contraption. Um, the Flow Frames is what they call it in the instructions. So, the end of our beehive construction. Let me straighten this out a little bit. I'll pull this forward. I'm trying to get this situated just so. Like I said, it's kind of like Legos, but kind of not because they don't interlock really well. They just kind of sit on top of each other. So, that's it. We've got the base down here with a little bee door, the base, the which is the brooder box, and then this is the super, which the flow frames will be in, and the nice roof. And here we go, I'm so proud. <laughs> that was a fun little construction product, project, and I'm looking forward to getting honey at it, uh, out of it by maybe the end of this year or the beginning of next year.